I started making booktube videos in September 2011, exactly a year later, I started getting English degrees. Although the two things were both motivated by my love of reading, they've always felt distinctly separate. Booktube was a place where I could truly share my enthusiasm for books and be creative in the ways that I shared that enthusiasm. It's a place where I could meet other book lovers and a place where I could read whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. University was a place where I could learn the history of books, understand which books we care about and why we care about them, and write essay after essay after essay, learning how to best put together my thoughts on a complicated idea. They're both great, I don't have a favorite, booktube and university, and they've definitely influenced each other. I've somehow convinced a few cool teachers throughout my degrees to let me make videos instead of essays, and I've made videos about the things I've learnt in the classroom. It was when I heard this quote about Anthony Trollope, the Victorian novelist, that I started to wonder though, is booktube educational? The kind of teaching that Trollope's fiction offers cannot be regulated or examined. Its outcomes are unpredictable. It is tempting, therefore, to think that it can play no real part in education. Trollope was a writer who believed that the novelist, if he have a conscience, must preach his sermons with the same purpose as the clergyman. He, like many writers, felt that school wasn't the only place where you should be finding education and that it was the job of the writer and the artist to put that education in their writing to create their own system of ethics. It makes me think about Orwell's thoughts in Why I Write, that writers have the desire to push the world in a certain direction to alter or other people's ideas of the kind of society that they should strive after. Now all I have to do is prove it. I went to the library and I signed out a bunch of books that could help me with this research and I confirmed some interviews with other booktubers to make sure that I wasn't just talking about my own experiences. These women have been making booktube videos for years and have made significant contributions to their subsets of booktube. And so I asked them, is booktube educational? And what is booktube's relationship to a formal literary education? I do think that there are people who will automatically discount booktube's educational potential simply because some of it is lighthearted or more on the entertaining side. And I think this is less a fault of booktube and more because there seems to be this misconception, especially in academia, that serious thinking or serious learning isn't done in an entertaining manner. It's not something that you necessarily enjoy. It's something that you have to work through and push through. I personally think that Booktube's greatest educational potential comes from the fact that it is a discussion-based platform. Unlike writing an essay in the solitary confines of the library and then turning it into your one professor, uh, when you make a booktube video and you share your opinions and your analysis of a book, you get almost instantaneous feedback. And so it's kind of like being in a analysis workshop. University is great to look at reading in a very different way, in an analytical way, um, and for studying literature. I think booktube itself uh, should remain a community that is based on sharing the love of literature. Booktube makes you read books and books make you smarter is what it comes down to basically. I mean books open you up to new experiences, they make you more compassionate, it makes you a better writer, it makes you a better thinker. There are so many benefits that come with reading and the regular education system tends to make reading seem like a giant chore. If it's a giant chore, it's not something that you want to go out and do on your own. And when you come to booktube, you kind of learn to love reading. And that is something very, very valuable. You know, if you love reading, then you're going to go out and pursue more books and you're going to just keep learning and evolving and broadening your horizons as a human being. It's not something that we measure at college, these different aspects of learning, you know? It's a completely different type. It's human. Being a human. <laughs> there were two main ideas that the booktubers were echoing. The first was that booktube is fun, whereas school is serious. And the second was that booktube is educational, but it's teaching passion and love as opposed to any 
content information. The first idea that there's a dichotomy between serious and fun, studious and enthusiastic, I think can be better grappled with if we understand the conversations around professionals and amateurs. So let's take a look at Caroline Dinshaw's How Soon Is Now, a text about queer temporalities where she discusses the topic. Amateur reading is not professional reading or criticism manqué, but as amateurs, they can work to impose the opposite trajectory, making the professional mainstream itself more open, more multiple. Amateur literary activities can expose and critique professional literary activities. It allows the masses to complicate and add nuance to professional and academic conversations and ideas. And remember that the word amateur isn't an insult. Amateur comes from the old French word lover of, love passion. Caroline Dinshaw continues that to focus on amateurs, to find shared desire in both amateurs and professionals, indeed to find the amateur in the professional, is to encourage real interaction and dialogue between these two estranged groups. It is to resist the soulless professionalization of the university and to help create a public space for activities that are not now recognized as intellectually consequential. Book two can be this public space she's envisioning, a place with professional academics, people with degrees or people that work in libraries or work in publishing, but it can also be, also be, because it's a public space, a place where anyone that has enthusiasm for literature, no matter their background, has a voice. Now the second idea that booktube is educational, but instead of teaching specific content, it's teaching passion or love is fascinating. It reminds me of Rousseau's concept that education should be the art of forming men, making great people, not making great academics. It makes me think of Wordsworth running around the field saying that when he was in school, oft did I leave my comrades and the crown, buildings and groves, because school wasn't teaching him what he needed. Life, living, passion, that gives him that knowledge he seeks, which is going to make him a better poet and ultimately, in that way, a better teacher. It's a super romantic idea, both lowercase and uppercase romantic, that booktube can be part of this teaching of passion and love. And I love that idea. <laughs> so I wanted to know more about that passion. Is this community giving booktubers, both the watchers and the creators, a space for enthusiasm that wasn't available in school? A hundred percent, definitely. I think basically what booktube is, is all those geeky, uh, passionate people in your seminars and lectures um, who you kind of love. Um, I think Booktube just goes and collects them all and just kind of puts them in the Booktube community. I was always frustrated going to university where people hadn't done the reading or they just seemed completely like they didn't care if they were there or not. Passion is infectious and passion is 100% what I loved about university but I felt was a little bit lacking for my fellow students but in Booktube it's there in abundance. I think in a way Booktube gives you the freedom to discuss anything. Um, and it gives you the freedom maybe not always to be as eloquent and have backed up sources um, and feel like you know you have to make sure you know everything about a topic like in an essay you want to feel completely thoroughly researched but she gives you the freedom to sit down and go actually forget these like you know 10 extra pages of reading that I could do I'm just going to sit down and make this video and tell you how much I love this book um, strangely though I do feel like that's actually why I have a lot of anxiety as a creator because I think oh god I haven't researched it enough I haven't got all my footnotes correct I do think that booktube provides a really great safe space for reading enthusiasm which I honestly wish had existed when I was in high school I was still a pretty big reader in high school but it wasn't something that was considered cool enough to talk about with my other high school friends so I just didn't talk about it at all and so I really appreciate that booktube is kind of non-discriminatory in that it's just a community of readers who love reading of all kinds. You know, there's no one way to read. There's no best way of reading. Um, I think I think it makes for a far more um, diverse community. I think it makes for a far healthier reading community as well. Booktube has created an amazing space to be enthusiastic about the books I love. It was embarrassing, not embarrassing, let's say, it was shamed 
that's what it was in high school to be super excited about books. I had to search out people outside of my core friend group to find someone who had even read Harry Potter. So I could be like, oh my god, you know this? Yeah. And that little connection was so rare. And now I have that on an everyday basis with all these people in my internet community. And it's amazing. I've never had a real book club until the internet. And they became my book family. Like, it's not just a book club. It's made my life so much more fun. These answers really reflect my own experiences with school and reading. I've always been an avid reader, but I never had anyone to share it with. And English class certainly was not that place. I actually really hated English class. For the first half of high school, it felt like a chore, it felt difficult and stressful. And it wasn't until grade 11, when I had a certain teacher, Mrs. Waters, who was enthusiastic, who had that passion. And we read Animal Farm as a class and I could see in her what I see now in a lot of the booktubers that I love. Just passion. And I can hear that in these answers. That feeling that booktube is a haven for people who never felt cool or popular with their reading. In Loving Literature, Deirdre Lynch points out, the complaints that current and former PhD students in English make about how the training and criticism and theory to which they must conform smothers the love of authors and of reading that had brought them to their graduate programs in the first place. Professionals have long had to define themselves as professionals by ascribing charisma, authenticity, and a capacity for true feelings to amateur to the unschooled who are yet glorious in the might of untamed pleasures. And of course, that's a Wordsworth quote, speaking of that romanticism. And I think that's why Booktube can be so complementary to academic literature education, because literature students become those students because of that original love. And it can be smothered, as she says, by the stress, the feeling of homework. In booktube, it can just be unadulterated love. You can shout and make theories and laugh and make inside jokes. And like Marissa said, you can do it all in a safe space where everybody is on your team. I like this idea proposed in the organizational basis of leisure participation. Nearly every serious leisure activity is anchored in a vibrant social world endowed with the capacity once recognized to attract and hold a large proportion of its participants. Although the activity itself is exciting, the excitement it generates is also enhanced by the presence of networks of like-minded regulars and insiders, important strangers, local and national organizations, spaces for pursuing the activity, and tourists who visit from time to time, the audiences, spectator admirers, onlookers, and others. In other words, Booktube works as well as it does because it's a network of book enthusiasts, it's diverse, it's complex. It's driven by excitement shared between like-minded people. It's a community. This had me thinking, though. In university, of course, there's also a community, but it's an hierarchical community. There are tiers. If you're writing an essay, you will quote a professor or a specialist, but you wouldn't quote your best friend. How is that complicated on Booktube, where all opinions are personal and anecdotal? I feel like there's no one authoritative voice on Booktube. I feel like there are people that you trust and you make their voice authoritative yourself when you watch them. If I trust the reviewer, like I'm gonna go to their channel when they review something that I wanna read and I'm taking that as an authoritative voice. Like, oh, they thought it was good. This book's gonna be good. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna read it. And if I don't trust the person or, you know, I think that their tastes are different from mine, I'll be like, oh, well, I'll consider it. It's more of an opinion. You pick who your professor is if you want to compare it to a college experience on Booktube. You choose your professors. I would say that the vast majority of the authoritative voices on Booktube aren't given that authority or don't have weight because of some external worldly um, qualification or degree, they're 
authoritative based on self-study. And by self-study, I mean these are people who focus in on certain genres or authors or topics. For example, some of the booktubers with the most authority, with the most weight behind what they say, are the really huge booktubers who predominantly read YA fiction. And because they're so familiar with young adult fiction, people trust what they say about those books and in a sense they've become young adult authorities here on booktube. It's never going to be a community of equals, it doesn't have to be. Society isn't a community of equals at all. Um, so it would be odd you know, if we just created this kind of utopian society where there is no problems. I do think there is a certain element of, oh well this person lived their book and therefore this must be right. Um, but mainly I think that's the trust thing. I think rather than just viewing it as, you know, there is an amazing person, I think you get to trust her creator because, you know, they're a person in front of you. As I hope you just noticed, all three women brought up the idea of trust. That was not in my question. So each booktuber just brought that up independently. In The Committed Reader, Stebbin says that the internet is a tremendous resource for self-directed learning, though users must constantly try to differentiate authoritative from non-authoritative sources. Now he's likely referring to the idea of fact-checking, but I think it's still apt. Unlike a university, you don't just intrinsically trust the people that you watch. You don't think like your professors, oh, this booktuber just knows what they're talking about. It's up to every viewer to make that decision for themselves. I think that this is an important difference between the two, academia and booktube. How can booktube be educational if we don't have a system of checks on authority, if we don't automatically have voices that we trust? Like Marissa said, this is a community of self learners and therefore it's up to each viewer to validate and decide how legitimate each creator is. This brings me to the final idea I want to explore to further examine what booktube's educational effects may be. In the essay collection Reading Communities, Danell Seto explains that a common thread runs through all these chapters, the assumption that shared reading is both a social process and a social formation. It's a social process to discuss books here with other people, but it's also a social formation. We've created a vocabulary, book hauls, book tags, to-be-read piles, book hangovers. We've created rules of conduct for properly doing sponsored videos. We've created a complex community. And so this brings me back to the first quotation I showed at the beginning of this video. Books cannot be understood apart from the society that creates them and conversely, no literate society can be understood without some study of the book it produces. Kathy Davidson. Books reflect our world, and if we want to understand our world, we need to reflect and be critical of those books. How does Booktube do that job, and how does it do it differently than a university? I think it's really important to remember that when you look at a university setting, particularly something like a literature department, um, you're looking for not only people who could um, test well enough to get into college, who could afford to go to college, but you're looking at a group of people who knew that they weren't going into a field that was going to give them immediate job security. When you look at booktube, I think you actually get a richer and more diverse data source because we aren't limited to those people who could get into a specific program. Yes, we have literature students and educators and librarians, but we also have accountants and people who work with the army and people who are in high school and middle school and who work retail. And generally speaking, we reflect more accurately society as a whole. If you have a camera and you have access to the internet, you know, you can make your own videos. And the difference is with universities that it is not people, kind of normal people, who make the decisions about what's in the canon or what is important. Um, you know, it's these kind of old men, you know, who probably sit somewhere at Oxford and decide these big things, rather than, you know, you can be anybody. Like, I started filming in my bedroom when I was like 15, um, and started talking about books. I think you can, it enables people who maybe, not see me, but people who don't necessarily feel like they have a voice um, in literary debates to share their views. And I think already that means that booktube can be more diverse because it's letting more people speak and have their voices heard. I think like any medium, booktube can be more diverse and should be more diverse. Um, and it's up to 
I guess people like me, the creators, to kind of engage with those conversations about diversity. I know I myself have learned so much through booktube celebrating diverse books and have picked up so many different stories about so many different types of people because of booktube and it's really helped me grow as a person and I'm sure it helps so many other people like me who weren't exposed to all this until came to the World Wide Web where you could find all sorts of magical things. I think that they're right and since it's time for some conclusions here are my final thoughts. I've always felt like a hybrid here on booktube. I fiercely feel that you do not need a degree or a qualification to speak your opinions about books but at the same time I'm a few months away from getting my second degree about books. This research has let me better understand what type of educational work booktube is doing. There are some channels that are overtly educational, but for the majority, the education here is about passion. It is in a place, this place, booktube, where the barriers of entry are low, where a wider array of people than an institution like university could ever allow that can teach people to learn and be encouraged to be enthusiastic about reading. I want to thank the women who participated in these interviews so much for their very carefully considered ideas. They're truly awesome people and I'm going to link them all down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to hear your ideas about this. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you the next time I make something. Bye!